This video contains spoilers for some of the TV shows talked about. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I thought I would just sit down and kind of have a conversation with all of you. And I just wanted to kind of talk about a few movies and shows I have been watching over the past few weeks and kind of storytelling in that medium. If you haven't, go ahead and grab yourself a drink because I'm gonna be talking about my favorite shows at the moment um, for fall. I've been watching a lot of witchy things, which is surprising but apparently that's just what I've been going for. So the TV shows I am going to be talking about today is going to be Cursed, Night Books, and Squid Games. So get your drink, get your coffee, and let's uh, begin into it. I'm going to talk about Squid Games last because I have a lot to say about that and I'd rather not have the beginning of my of my uh, thing on the on anyway i'm gonna start with cursed <laughs> um so cursed was recommended to me by a friend and i actually started watching it last year i think it's a netflix original based off the um tale of arthur and the round table and the sword in the lake the lady of the lake i think pretty sure It's not, I don't want to say it's not very accurate, but it's not very accurate. It's a very loose retelling, kind of like how Red Siren is a loose telling of Ariel, the Little Mermaid, because yes, it has the character Arthur, but it's, it's very weird. Okay, so I'm going to put a disclaimer out that I have not read Arthur in the Round Table or any of the Arthur, ah. Uh, any of those legends of the sword and stone, the sword and lake, any of that. Um, the round table, Knights of the Round Table, I have never read. Don't ask me why, I just, my education's lacking, okay? And that's also why I do Fairy, fairy Tale of Fridays, is because I didn't get a lot of education in school. Okay, I, I got a lot of education, but I didn't get to read a lot of classics. I didn't read... Sense of Sensibility, Weathering Heights, Emma, I didn't read any of that. I, I didn't read any classics that everyone has. I, I think I've read, I read The And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I read um, To Kill a Mockingbird. And then I read something else. But like, all the like big classics that like are like must have reads... I didn't read. Okay, I have read Of Mice and Men. And that's about it. Like, I really don't feel like I have a lot of education when it comes to classic literature. Especially when it comes to, like, legends and myths that kind of hold a candle to things that, um, are, that we're watching today. Like, why, why these things were so big back then and they still the themes are still present in today's media. So, like, with the um, Lady of the Lake, I can see parallels with the book series by Cassandra Clare. It's called, what is it called? I have it. Um, Shadowhunters. How, like, there's, like, a lake and... I think there's a lady of the lake. Like, you can see a lot of similarities and certain themes come back in today's literature from those classic stories and poems. And so I don't feel like I have a lot of that background information, so I don't see that those themes are being taken from so-and-so literature and why that, that literature is so important. So that is why I am self-educating myself with Fairy Tale Friday and every Friday I do a fairy tale because I simply just feel like my education on literature is lacking and as somebody who loves literature I don't feel like it should be lacking. Anyway, let's get back to Charmed or Cursed. So it's about like this fae who's cursed and I think the curse is of magic, which, okay, I liked and hated this TV show. 
to be honest. It stars the person who was in 13 Reasons Why, like the main character of 13 Reasons Why, she's the main character in this. I forget her name. I think the CGI, I think the costumes, I think everything of that nature was amazing in this TV show and I felt like it had really good ideas in some places but something that kind of like upset me was the main character. So she is, spoiler alert, the daughter of Merlin the wizard and he has like lost his power for some reason. We don't know why because we don't get a season two. I like to think because he had a daughter it got transferred to her but I also feel like that's really stupid. And then he gets it back when he gets the sword back. So was the sword the source of his power? Because I'm just, it's its a lot of questions and it doesn't really make sense to me. But we only got one season, right? So the whole thing is that she becomes very dependent on the sword, which will be, ex, ex, I don't know how to say it. Anyway, the sword, the legendary sword um, that King Arthur has. And the sword grants her power and it's, filled with the power of um, her people and how they're losing their their rights and how the Catholic Church, yes, the Catholic Church, is trying to basically kill all of the Fae because they are works of the devil and God wants you to... It's, it's very, it's very disgusting and I won't go into that, but... Like, she had the power, she has magical powers without the sword. So why is she leaning so heavily on the sword? It's like once the sword is away from her, she's like, oh no, I'm powerless. No, you have all the power. The sword just helps you a little bit. Like, I don't, like... And it just becomes a point of a, a crutch. And I hate it when magic becomes a crutch. Like, I just hate it because if it's taken away from you, who are you? And it just, it just upset me. And then she dies, quote unquote. And the whole thing, I just, it was, I mean, we only got one season. So that's all I'm going on. But... I don't know, there were some themes and some plot points that just did not make sense. And I know I'm ranting, but it actually, like, it had so much potential to be good. And I'm not saying, like, I just, we only got one season. So that's why I was like, well, Maybe it would be cleared up. You know, like, sometimes, like, in books, like, you'd be like, why? That doesn't make sense. And then in the fifth book, you're like, there it is. There it comes all together right then and there. So because of COVID, they did, and, and I don't think the, it came out during COVID, and I don't think the views were very high. So they did end up saying no to a season two, which I'm kind of sad about because it, did have some really good acting in it. The actors were great. That was the saving grace of this show. The costumes, the actors, like, it was good. It just was weird. And I didn't really understand the magic system. And again, it just wasn't explained, but it could have been explained in season two, like, so I don't wanna be too hard on it. But anyway, I actually really liked it. It was basically about a witch instead of a fae. She had magic. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And then, oh, I did watch Lock and Key. I will mention that. Lock and Key, I became obsessed with. It, it was funny because Lock and Key and Cursed had the same reaction out of me. I could not stop watching and I thought Lock and Key was wholly unique. And I know it's based off of a book, but I found it so unique, so fun. I originally didn't watch it because when I saw like the trailer on Netflix, I thought it was interactive. Like 
you decide which route we go. And I wasn't into that. I was like, no, no, we don't need to do that. That's not something I am interested in. I think that's a stupid idea and I hate that. So I never watched it. And then somebody at work was like, you need to watch it. And so I watched it and <laughs> I ended up staying up to like 2 a.m. to finish that series. It was so good. So if you have not watched Lock and Key, I highly recommend it. Um, the only... it I loved the lore it gave. It gave kind of a mystery and then murder mystery and then just... I hope that some things that were not answered or not explained too well come back in season two. Like the graveyard scene, I would love to have more of that. I'm just excited for season two, which is coming out, I think, in a week. I'm so excited! But I will be binging it on my couch on that Friday. Also, Dune comes out that day, so I will just be on my couch with popcorn all day. You guys will not hear from me all day. So, Lock and Key was really good. It's about, like, these kids who move to this house and has to find all these keys, and then they release a demon. Let's talk about the demon's character. Not the character, the actor. The actress who plays the demon, I don't like. And I don't know why I don't like her. I don't. I don't. I don't know why I don't like her. That's the thing, is I, I have no explanation, except I just don't like her, and maybe that's why she's such a good actress. It's because she typically plays villains, as I'll get to later. And maybe that's why I don't like her, because she's so disturbing as a villain that I just don't like her. I don't know, but that's that's all I'll say. I just, I, mm, no, didn't feel it for me. Um, and then I watch, what's it called? Nightbooks. So Nightbooks was kind of cute. It's a new release on Netflix, I think, and it's about a little boy who writes, who loves to write horror stories. Scary stories, like he kind of reminds me of like the younger Stephen King, he loves horror, and I think that that's really fun, and um, basically he decides to burn all of his stories and never write another thing again, which is very sad, and on the way down, the elevator opens up to like this I don't know how this works, but um, basically this magical hallway that entraps him and he is now trapped in an apartment with a witch and you have to tell her a scary story every single night and like that's, that's the story. And it starts out really slow, like I almost turned it off. And I looked up the reviews and they were all glowing reviews, so I was like, okay, I'll keep watching. Like, this is not good, but I will keep watching. So basically, the main character, who's a little boy, was so unlikable to me. His attitude was poopy. I didn't like him. He was like, I'm not going to write. I don't care. I'm going to be a rebel. I don't want to do anything you want me to dude, you're gonna die. Like, he doesn't, uh, yeah. he doesn't take anything seriously. It's really annoying. He's a little piece of poop and he's obsessed with escaping. I'm like, can we just focus on the task at hand and then can we make it an escape story? Like, you gotta do the stories every night, but after you write the story, you can think about escaping. Like, there wasn't a lot of balance to it. Um, I think there's some fun lore to be explored because like I would like to know more about the witch and like Hansel and Gretel, Gretel and I would like to see like I would I just feel like there's a lot of lore that could be explored in this and I don't think that they wanted to go that route and so I'm disappointed um it was a good it was a good heartfelt story though it was very slow in the beginning um and again, the witch is the same actress who played in Lock and Key, and I was not impressed. I, I just don't like this woman, and I don't know why. I was really upset at the end, spoiler alert, um, when she came back to life. Like, come on. 
I just, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I did like it. I felt like it was a good story of friendship. There were a lot of things left open. Like, I was like, at the end, I was like, so we're just gonna forget about all the other kids, like all this, all that. And we got a tease of what happens. I think they're gonna have another movie come out, thankfully. And I would like to see what happens. But again, like, wasn't that good. But I did enjoy it. I think little kids would enjoy it a lot more than I enjoyed it. You guys just have to watch it. It was interesting. And cute. And heartfelt. And cool at times. I don't know. This whole thing was kind of wild. It, it felt like a fever dream. It felt like a fever dream. That's, that's how I describe it. And then I watched Squid Games. You guys... So when I turned Squid Games on, I did not know it was a dubbed version, and the dubbed version, yes and no, pros and cons, sucked at times, didn't suck at other times, but it was very obvious it was the dubbed version, which I don't like it when things are super obvious that it's dubbed, but at the same time, they're speaking another language. But I just, I, I felt like some of the voice acting really st was not good. Um, at least in the beginning, I felt like it got better toward the end, or maybe I just got used to it. I don't know. But Lock and Key, not Lock and Key, um, Squid Games. I saw Squid Games on Twitter. No, 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 TikTok. I saw it on TikTok, and I was intrigued. And I thought it was like some reality TV show. I thought it was gonna be like a humorous thing. And I think that some people will argue it is cause they are like, that was the stupidest thing I've ever watched. I'm like, have you watched the entire thing? Also, who are you? Cause are you a sociopath? Cause there's a lot of things I could go into with Squid Games. There's a lot of things I would love to talk about um, in depth about that, and if you guys would like to see a video on that, I would love to do one on that, but Squid Games, um, made me realize I cannot do gore. There were countless times I had to go like this to the TV. Countless times, like, actually, like, I felt like a child watching a horror film, because I was literally watching with my hands over my eyes, like, is it gonna be nasty? Is it gonna, like, I didn't know when the blood in the... <sighs> Can't do gore. And it's to the point now <laughs> where even when I think I was watching a kid's show, I think maybe um, Night Books or something, I was like, no, no, something happened. Something happened in this show. And no, it was um, Cursed. I couldn't even watch Cursed. Um, the dead bot, like, I couldn't, oh my gosh, I, I just can't anymore, I, I, unfortunately, I just can't, but I would love to do a video on Squid Games, I highly recommend it, but also, it's not gonna be for everybody, and know that going into this, it is not a reality TV show, it is not a humorous TV show, it is philosophical, I, I think it's very, like, thought-provoking, and brutal. And it says a lot about human kind. So, that's my thoughts on Squid Game. And I loved it. And hated it. And my, and my laptop's about to die, so I have to go without explaining more of that. But, if you would like to know more, more of my thoughts on that topic, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video.